Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and I'm the master taste of whiskey.com. And today I have a very, very special bottle here on my cast. Yes, I tell that always. But it's a Nika Daketsuru, 17 years old. A pure malt, a blending between malt whiskies from uh, different distilleries. 43% ABV and I'm afraid it's quite expensive. Up to a hundred euros, dollars, pounds, whatever. Um, with this bottle you receive a lot of Japanese history in terms of whiskey. And I already, I think I had some Japanese whiskies here on my cask already. At least the Yamasaki uh, Sherry Cast 2013, which should be the best whiskey in the world, but I'm afraid <laughs> I didn't vote that. Uh, and during this uh, introduction of the Japanese whiskies, uh, I already said a lot of the history of the Japanese whiskies. Um, and here we have one of the most, really most important uh, Japanese founders in terms of whiskey. This is the man, it's Mr. Taketsuru, uh, Matsataka Taketsuru, it's quite difficult for my tongue to pronounce this. It's the visionary and uh, he was born in 1894, so 19th century, and he managed to live until 1979. Uh, and he's the father of the Japanese whiskey, uh, and was born into a family of sake producers, so rice wine. And this uh, family business uh, was uh, run since nine, uh, 1733. After studying chemistry, he worked for a company in Osaka called Setsu Shutsu, which had plans to begin producing Japanese whiskey. In 1918, the young Taketsuru was sent to Scotland to learn production techniques and to gain experience. While studying in the University of Glasgow, he also became familiar with the arts of blending and of distilling. His dream was to create a malt distillery in Japan. He returned home in November 1920 and began working for the Kotobukiya Group, uh, for whom he built a distillery near Kyoto. This is how Taketsuru became the father of the first Japanese whiskey in 1924. Um, what they are not telling here on the label, I think this was, uh, he worked for the company which then became the Santori Corporation. But this is uh, a competitor in the market now, so they take the old names, but there's no relation to the Santori Group. In 1934, he decided to go his own way. Yeah, here the separation came. He created the company Dai Nippon Kayu and began building the Yoishi Distillery, a famous distillery, on the island of Hokkaido. The growing success enabled the company to open a new distillery in 1969, Miyagiko, near the city of Sendai on the island of Honshu. Uh, and from these, uh, the company Nika came up, which is a conglomerate today also, which is a really a big company, also famous for its whiskies. And on the other side, here's a girl. It's Rita Taketsuho, the muse, called the muse. She was born in 1896 and passed away in 1961 quite early. Jesse Roberta Cohen, born in Glasgow, met Matsataka Taketsuru in Scotland in 1919, when he invited her brother into, uh, initiated, not invited, initiated her brother into the martial arts. It was love at first sight for the pair and in January 1920 they were married in Glasgow. The couple then lived for a short time in Campbelltown before going back to Japan, where they would spend the rest of their lives together. Japan became her new county of adoption. She even accepted to live alone for a time, while Matsataka moved to Yoshi to supervise the construction of his new distillery. 
Throughout her life, Rita would support her husband and his dream to bring whiskey to Japan. More than the success of her husband, her life and personality made her an extremely popular figure in Japan. She died at the age of 65 without ever returning to Scotland or even to Europe. Um, Taketsuru, pure malt, 17 years old, yes, and now we know why this whiskey come from the Yoishi and Miyagiko distilleries, because those two were the first uh, he built after returning to Japan. So this is a famous combination of two history-laden distilleries. Color old gold with a copper highlight, nose spicy and delicate. It also reveals fruity yellow plum, peach and chocolate note. It develops into a leather dried tobacco leaf and dried fruit, apricot and figs. Palate rich and generous. It is reminiscent of preserved fruit, orange and moro morello, oh, morello cherries and is extremely un... <sighs> ah, weird words. Ank tschüss. Tschüss. What is the misspelling? Creamy. It develops into toffee, mocha and hazelnut. Finish long with an aftertaste of praline, charred wood and cigar smoke worthy of an old Speyside whiskey. Any seed and citrus provide this whiskey with its freshness and elegance. Fine herbal notes are also present. So here we go. A wonderful bottle, but I'm afraid uh, it is colored a little green, so the color of the whiskey uh, is not that, that real. And here on the label it's the same set as on the box, on the card box, 17 years old, 43% ABV, I said that before. <clears throat> no cork, so there won't be any taste of cork in this whiskey. The Japanese don't take chances, no, never. <laughs> Dark fruity, sherry, lots of sherry aroma. Uh, a lot of the whiskey in this blend, blended malt whiskey, here on the label it still says pure malt, um, comes from sherry casks. So, just normal to have this heavy sherry together with the fruitiness from the sherry, spiciness from the European wood, and lighter fruits, peaches, but also becoming darker like plums, even a hint of chocolate already. Leather, well this is no leather, this is plastic from China, and a little tobacco and this this cold smoke and a worn out pipe on the table close to an old leather chair. This is it. Yeah, and dried fruit. Very complex. Two distilleries, two different influences, different casks. So a lot of different aromas in this whiskey. <sighs> yeah, first sip. First, quite smooth, only 43% ABV, then spicy from the oak wood, becoming drier, a little cr creamy, and mocha, espresso, double espresso, black, yeah, but not too long, the aftertaste is not that bitter, it's in the taste, in the aftertaste it's smoother, 
fading away, pleasant, no bitterness, wonderful, little spiciness still there, wonderful complex. And if you swallow the whiskey, then your brain tells you he liked it, so I present him better taste the second time. He decided that this is good, so I ask him to give me more. I will. Wonderful, not that bitter the second time. No tobacco, close to no smokiness at all. So this is gone, a little leathery. A little aniseed coming up, yeah. Citrus, far away, not really. And uh, this theory of pro presenting uh, better imaginations in your head after the first sip, this was evaluated by a by a professor at the University of Dresden. He made olfactory uh, investigations with a set of people and uh, found out on a scientific way that this second impression is always better than the first one if you swallow it. If you spit it out, then the second wouldn't be that good. It comes from the aromas going up uh, to the top of your mouth from the back. <sighs> Wonderful whiskey. It's quite expensive, as I said, up to $100. And it's quite rare, so don't <laughs> be lucky if you find it. Don't be afraid if you don't find it. It's normal not, not to get your fingers on this bottle. Um, but you also buy a, a lot of history with this bottle of the founder of the Nika whiskies. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned, there's more to come, and feel free to share this video with your friends. Thank you.